Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with my review of the new iPad 3. As the successor to the iPad 2, which sold roughly 400 gajillion units, the new iPad has a lot to live up to, but is it worth it? At first glance, it's hard to tell the new iPad from the iPad 2. Both have a nearly identical design, and this really isn't a bad thing. Up front, you have a VGA front-facing camera, along with the home button and retina display. Like the iPad 2, you can get the new iPad in both black and white, as well as in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte capacities, as well as with and without 4G LTE. The back and sides of the iPad are milled out of a single piece of aluminum, with nothing but Apple and iPad logos on the back. Taking a closer look at the specs, you'll see it's slightly thicker and heavier than the previous iPad, but it's for a good reason that I'll get into in a minute. Overall, if you've ever tried an iPad 2, you'll know what to expect here. A very premium product that looks and feels great. Of course, I can't do a review of the new iPad without talking about its headlining feature, the Retina Display. Compared to the original iPad and iPad 2, it has quadruple the resolution at 2048 by 1536 pixels. To put it in perspective, a high definition TV is typically going to have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. While a lot of Apple's marketing is over the top, I think they're spot on with the iPad 3 screen. It simply is the best. Not only will you not be able to see individual pixels normally, but the color and saturation are excellent, especially as you turn the brightness up. In general usage, I got between 8 and 10 hours out of a charge, which is roughly in line with the 10 hours that Apple quotes. Somewhat surprisingly, however, is the fact that the new iPad has a lot bigger battery. The iPad 2 has a 25 watt hour battery. In comparison, the iPad 3 has 42.5 watt hours of capacity, which is even larger than the MacBook Air 11 inch has. The Retina display is the culprit here, and your battery life can be as low as 4 or 5 hours with the brightness turned all the way up. Charging times are also much longer, taking 6 hours or more to get a full charge. While we're being all geeky here, let's talk a bit about what makes the new iPad tick. It's powered by an Apple A5X chip, which combines a dual-core 1GHz CPU with a quad-core GPU. The processor is basically identical to the iPad 2, and only slightly faster than the iPhone 4S, but the GPU is twice as powerful with an additional 2 cores compared to the iPad 2. It also has twice as much RAM at 1GB. While this looks like a nice upgrade on paper, it ends up being roughly the same. Since the new iPad has to push a lot more pixels on the display, those extra two GPU cores end up making the performance just about even with the iPad 2. That's not bad, as the last iPad was no slouch when it comes to performance, but it would have been nice to have a more substantial upgrade. Regardless, the new iPad is still very fast and fluid when doing most tasks. It also runs the same version of iOS, 5.1 as of recording this review. It remains very similar to on the iPhone and iPod Touch, and identical to older models of the iPad, although you now get Siri voice dictation, which allows you to use your voice instead of typing. Unfortunately, the full version of Siri isn't available. The new iPad also has a brand new 5 megapixel iSight camera around back. It's a mix between the iPhone 4 and 4S cameras, and is really quite good. Pictures are nice and sharp, and are nearly as good as on the iPhone 4S. Alright, so I'm now recording using the rear-facing camera on the new iPad. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a little example here. Uh, now, of course, no matter what you do, the iPad is enormous. You're not really going to want to, you know, use it as a you know, camera or anything for recording. However, the camera, I do have to say, is not too bad. Uh, so, of course, it has all the features from the iPhone 4 as well as the 4S. There, I did just tap to focus. Uh, it's not quite as good as the 4S camera, but I do think it's a slight bit better than the iPhone 4. Just like the iPhone 4S was a moderate upgrade from the iPhone 4, so too is the new iPad compared to the iPad 2. The screen is fantastic. Battery life remains solid, the gaming performance is top notch, and the new camera is quite a bit better. Having optional support for 4G LTE with 3G worldwide is also a nice improvement. That said, if you have an iPad 2, I really don't recommend upgrading. The only major benefit is a better screen, and while I'll be the first to admit it's absolutely excellent, I really don't consider that enough of a reason to upgrade. However, if this is your first tablet, or you're upgrading from an original iPad or other tablet, then I have no issues in recommending the new iPad. It's simply as good as it gets. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.